Matthew Peterson has now withdrawn his nomination for a lifetime judicial appointment after last week's painful appearance at his confirmation hearing. That makes a total of three of President Trump's judicial picks to withdraw their nominations. The other two include Brett Talley. He was nominated to, to be a district judge in Alabama. He offered to withdraw his nomination after it came to light that he received a unanimous not qualified rating from the American Bar Association, had no trial experience, wrote a number of controversial blog posts, and failed to disclose a potential conflict of interest because his wife works at the White House. The other is Jeff Mateer, a top lawyer for the state of Texas. He previously described transgender children as evidence of, quote, Satan's plan. Despite those nominees withdrawing, the Senate has confirmed 12 appeals court judges in President Trump's first year. That is a record, but critics are blasting some of these deeply conservative appointments. And they include a 45-year-old Amy Barrett, who confirmed to be a Chicago-based federal appeals court judge. She previously claimed the Affordable Care Act's birth control mandate is a, quote, grave violation of religious freedom. She also questioned the Supreme Court's landmark Roe v. Wade ruling. 52-year-old Kentucky lawyer John Bush was appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 6th District. NPR points out he blogged under a fake name disparaging LGBT rights and citing alt-right media reports about conspiracy theories and false information. He also wrote that slavery and abortion are, quote, the two greatest tragedies in our country. And 44-year-old Kevin Newsom, he was confirmed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th District. As Alabama's Solicitor General, he was criticized for efforts to limit critical protections under Title IX. That is the federal law banning sex discrimination in education. Joining me now, MSNBC legal analyst Danny Savalas. Danny, three of President Trump's judicial picks have withdrawn their nominations over questions about their qualifications What's the issue? How are these people being selected? Like, to me, I think that's a wow, but is it normal? The normal selection process is for the president or the White House to consult with senators in the nominee's home state. But that, in a way, is a sort of democratic tradition because those senators can issue or choose not to issue blue slips and, in effect, veto a potential nominee. So, therefore, the, the president has an incentive to only nominate in states where he has a strong following and strong support, deep red states. And that may explain why you're getting some of these nominees. Uh, in Peterson's case, for example, his argument would be that, well, he deals mostly with appellate-type uh, constitutional administrative issues. The problem is a district court is a trial court, and he must learn at some point what a motion in limine is and what uh, the Daubert standard is. The fact that he didn't have trial experience, not fatal, even according to the ABA. But those other things, he must know. Danny, you say naming circuit court judges, something we often ignore, is arguably more important than naming a Supreme Court judge. Why? Because the vast majority of cases have no chance. We'll never see the inside of the Supreme Court courthouse. That's because I, to say vast majority is an understatement. Anywhere from 1 to 5 percent of petitions are even granted uh, for a hearing by the Supreme Court. That means for almost all cases, the court of last resort is going to be the federal circuit court in your jurisdiction. For all purposes, the circuit court is the Supreme Court for most litigants. That's why appointment to circuit courts is critically important. All right, I want to bring my panel in. Matt, Mike, these appointments, these record number of judicial appointments, this is a huge win for President Trump. All year long when we would question, how do these family values conservatives accept President Trump's behavior, you know, in certain tweet rants and so on and so forth. But in terms of the impact all of these appointments have, these are lifetime appointments and it impacts almost every aspect of our lives. It's not the moral majority that's sitting around and, 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 and re requesting its slate of judicial candidates here. It's actually the kind of broad conservative establishment who's been making these, these picks. This is a lot of people who do not like Donald Trump say that at least his picks to the bench have been good. People like Don Willett, uh, who's a great jurist out of Texas, who's on the Fifth Circuit now, he's going to rule many times 
not in favor of Donald Trump here. And it's a, it's a shame that I think in, in the kind of knee-jerk hysteria against Trump in some cases, including in, in the Willett uh, uh, confirmation process, people just like focus on whether his tweets were funny as opposed to what is his judicial philosophy. There's some direct there, and I'm glad to see the direct has been withdrawn. I hope more direct gets withdrawn in the future. But some of these picks have been good, and you'll be thanking uh, uh, them to have been picked in the future. For conservatives, this is a winning year, Michael. Yeah, I, I, well, Matt said I, I don't have to thank them, though. Uh, no, no. I, you don't have to, but I'm saying you will. They're, they're critics of executive power of the kind that Donald Trump wants to exert, and you'll be happy that there'll be breaks on what he does. I, we, hold on, Michael. We cannot forget President Trump was not the first to exert executive power or push those limits. No, no, no. We were making those same uh, criticisms in the last administration. But, but when you saw Peterson testify, and, 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 and saw that these had, be, and so often have become patronage jobs, too. And like the worst sort of patronage in New York City politics. Forget about not knowing what limiting was. It, he acted like he couldn't spell it, okay? And I think that that was a pretty good civics lesson to see what's been going on in broad daylight with some of the people that you just listed, Steph, who, who absolutely were not qualified to be judges. So what do you make of the criticism that some are saying President Trump, while nobody's watching and it's allowed, is stacking the courts? These are white, male, conservative, young judges. They'll be there for a long time. Well, he had, I mean, Mitch McConnell is the one who pre-stacked the courts by not approving a lot of judicial nominees, including that right. kind of ninth, uh, ninth uh, uh, justice there. And we were talking in the, in the green room, sorry, we talk sometimes. Um, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see when Donald Trump is a lame duck and some of the uh, other uh, Supreme Court nominees are uh, uh, decide to retire. Are we going to, and if the Senate uh, right. is controlled by the Democratic Party, I think we're going to see some eight uh, man or eight person that, or seven. Or judge. even seven. We, we may have seen a seven person court. Because once the Democrats get the Senate back, they're going to do to the Republicans what the Republicans did to them. Well, that doesn't really solve anything. Uh, before we go, though, on this, Michael, what is your take that we're looking at some of these nominees and they're wholly unqualified? The scary thing is what you just said. They're here for life, okay? And circuit court judges are, you know, uh, will hear a lot more cases and have a lot more to say about the law of the land, even though, the, the, you know, you sometimes fear that the law of the land is getting folded into paper airplanes in this country for a long time to come. It's dangerous. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.